What is going on everybody and welcome to part 8 of the AI in StarCraft 2 with Python tutorial series where we are now applying deep learning um, and really just finding out that we have to build the data first as, as we often do in tutorials. So uh, what we're going to be doing now is just kind of building on the last uh, tutorial where we're trying to get this picture to be a good representation of what's going on in the game right now. I hope you're hungry, because there's going to be some pasta. So, so um, and bad jokes to go with it. So, um, so this is fine for the Nexus, um, but, but we want a lot of buildings. We, you know, ideally, we'd like to see our, our Nexus, our, our probes, our assimilators, our gateways, our stargates, all that stuff. We want to see all of those. And then we'd also probably like to see our workers in our um, the Void Rays. So uh, with that... Um, I'm going to replace this code, and again, you can go to the text-based version of this tutorial and grab the code. Uh, it's in the description, and so I think what I'll do is I'm just going to do copy. Actually, just copy to here, down to there. Okay, so now I've changed this slightly. We've got the draw dictionary, which contains the objects that we might want to draw. This will be the size of those objects, um, basically the diameter of the circle. And then these are the colors. So we're going to kind of color code things. Um, because it's a uh, you know, ConvNet, in theory, you could like change these by like one value. <laughs> and, and the ConvNet should understand it just the same. Um, but really, for yourself, uh, it's probably useful to, to change them. But you could just do like full green, do like 255G, and then 254G for a different thing, and 253 for a different thing. I wouldn't recommend it, but you, you could do that. The only other thing you probably want to think about is maybe drawing things in the proper order, like so from largest to smallest. That way you can see things over other things. You also could throw in like some sort of alpha or something, but I'm not going to do that. So anyway, then we just iterate over that draw dict and for the unit, um, as long as that unit is ready, uh, so I talked about that in the last one, as long as it's actually produced and it's like a thing that's actual, um, we'll grab the position and then we'll draw it based on the, the thing. So the diameter and then the color. So that's the visualization for the rest of everything. I'm just gonna run that to make sure uh, that the copy and pasta worked as intended. And if that works, the next thing I'm going to have us do is, um, I think we're going to do a scout. So since we're drawing it, and, and just really in the game in general, it's really beneficial to be able to see your enemy. So maybe initially you might send one of your worker units just to their death, basically over to the enemy area, just to see, see what they're doing. Um, and then later you can actually build like Protoss has a scout. Um, or I'm sorry, it's called an observer. Um, and you can send over the observer to the enemy and just kind of float over there and see what they're up to. So, so that's what we're going to add uh, should this work. And let me bring it up. So yeah, so now you can see it's a much more interesting uh, result. We've got, you know, our nexus is here. We've got what I believe, yeah, these big blues are stargates. Um, I don't think we're actually, are we drawing? I forget if we draw these. Sim yeah, we are drawing the assimilator. Um, oh, we don't really have to import those because we're we already imported those. We have to build them. Okay, so um, great, but now we don't see the enemy either. So that's the next thing that we want to do is we we do want to draw the enemy, but we also need to scout the enemy because just simply drawing like the enemy when they come to our base isn't really informative enough. We we want to know what's up with the enemy. What are they doing? What are they building? How big is their base? How many units do they have? And we can know all this if we just send a scout to them. So that's uh, the next thing uh, that we want to do. So um, I'm going to just pop over here and let's add that in. So um, let me, I think I'll close this. Yes. Now what we want to do is close that, come up here, and just like everything else, we want to add the method. So I'm actually going to have await self.scout. We're going to do scout as the primary objective. So um, now what we'll do is we'll come down to, um, I guess we'll just write it up here. Um, 
and I think I'll copy pasta this one too. We'll save some time. We're going to knock out a bunch of stuff. I know most people just really want to get to the, the deep learning part, and this is all logic that should be legible and understandable. Again, this was all, I don't even remember, but this is a perfect example of me just printing out the dir of something so I could see what, what it do. I think I was trying to figure out how to move the dang scout. Um, move to subdomain. Oh, we'll have to build this. Um, print move to. Yeah, but the the actual move coordinates have to. It has to be. It's you can't just pass a coordinate. It's got to be an object. So we'll talk about that in a second. But because um, that actually was really difficult <laughs> to to figure out. I'm sure for the expert out there, you could have figured it out. But anyway. Um, all our scout method is going to do, so this is going to take, this is, because it's the first thing called, it'll take priority over these other things. You wouldn't want, you, the scout is like the most important thing because the, the, our network is working completely off of what we can see. So the most important thing that we can do is make sure we can see. So we want this scout to be numero uno in importance. So, um, so if we have an observer, which is our scout, and then don't forget to import it. So I'm just gonna observer. Um, if we have one, we're just gonna rename it to be our scout. Our zeroth observer will be our scout. It should be our only one. If the scout is idle, i.e. it's not doing anything, um, first we wanna know what's the enemy's location, and then we wanna move to that location. But um, you could just do this. Like you could just move to enemy location. That is a point location um, that can be passed. But I was really curious to get it to like move around, like so you could hopefully discover at least the two closest nexuses as well. So if you just go straight to the enemy start location, you're probably only going to see the single nexus. Um, and I think that you kind of want to move around to see if you could spot the other ones too. So what I wanted to do is have some variance to that. But it turns out that's not as simple as one might hope. So, so <clears throat> what you can see here is, okay, we're doing random location variance. So we need to add that method. So I'm just going to come here. Again, it's all in the text-based version of this tutorial. You don't need to like pause the video and write this all out. There's a link in the description. Go there. If I forget to put it there, let me know. <laughs> so... This is our random location variance. There was probably a better way to do this. This is a lot of code for what I was trying to achieve, but I, this is how I figured it out. So you can do the enemy start location, which to me appears to be point values. You can reference them as zeroth and firstth, but if you just simply return X and Y, like if you tried to return after we do this like little modification here, just a random variance, either plus 20 or minus 20, um, up to plus 20 or minus 20, um, if you try to return x, y, it doesn't work. It's got to be a, a special position thing. So, so it actually needs to be a 2D point. Um, and I guess the game is actually in three dimensions. Like you've got this elevation. So you really need to stress that it's a two, a point, and then it's like a position, point like, then x, y. So rather than just return x, y, you got to return this big old thing for coordinates. Um, but that's going to be super useful, especially if you wanted, like later on down the road, to use some sort of regression to determine the perfect placement for like uh, like a pylon, for example, for Protoss. Um, you'd want to know, like, how do I send it to that perfect position? Or if you want to like structure your, your attack in some sort of formation, um, you're going to need coordinates. So anyways, wow, that was really complicated, but I figured it out. I, I probably spent like I don't even I don't even know probably like two hours or three hours trying to <laughs> trying to figure out why that wasn't working. Um, anyways, or at least it felt like that long. So um, okay, so that's our scout, and I think that's everything. We just need to draw the scout at this point, um, and then we have a bunch of the enemy things. So this code actually got super long. Um, I'm trying to think. It looks like I cut some stuff out. So I'm going to re-paste in the Intel, and then we'll go over that one. Mm -hmm. Let me get rid of this. Thanks for whoever it was that said you can just hit escape in there. That's really useful. <laughs> so anyways, we draw all of our uh, things, and then we're going to come down here, and then we're going to draw the enemy stuff. Now, because you might not, you, you'll be fighting a different... Um, yeah, that's a legit comment. I'll get rid of that one. <laughs> because you don't know the enemy's um, 
you know, you could do it like by enemies like name or something like that, but I just wanted to keep it as simple as possible. So if it's a Nexus Supply Depot or Hatchery, we want to draw it with importance. So, um, so basically what we're going to say is if, um, if it's not in one of these like main base names, we'll draw it with a size of five. But if it is, we're going to draw it as a 15, just like we draw ours with a 15. And then we're going to iterate over the known enemy units. So that was just the known enemy buildings. And then we go over the enemy units. And again, just the little workers, we want to draw those pretty small. Otherwise, we're going to draw them like size three. You, you could go into it and you could draw all of them, you know, with the perfect sizes and stuff. I don't think it's going to matter at the end of the day. It, it might matter at the end of the day, especially if your enemy is producing, like, good units or really bad units. Like, you, you might actually want to dig a little deeper into that. Again, I'm just, I'm just trying to see, is this even going to work? So, um, not too worried about it. Um, and then finally, I want to draw the observer or have some sort of way to inform the neural network where the observer is because again if we don't have an observer that matters if we have an observer and like where that observer is and there's it's like not reporting a lot of enemy data or something like that um the position of the observer matters like maybe it's on his way or something like that so again we want to draw the observer and we're drawing the observer so small that we're just going to draw that last so we can again the most important thing it's on top of everything else okay and then we draw it now, I'm trying to think if there's... Oh, we need to build... Are we building it up here? Let me look here. So... Okay, so we need to definitely build the robotics facility. So, um, so we're going to go down to offensive force buildings and add that code. Basically right underneath the gateway. I'm just pasting it in here. So if we have a cybernetics core um, and it's ready and we have less than one robotics facility, if we can afford a robotics facility and we're not already building one, let's build one near a pylon so we can build it. <laughs> Easy enough. Okay. Uh, and I think that should be it. And let's run this thing and see what we get. Ah, an error right away. <gasps> Indentation. What's the deal? Oh, don't do that to me. Uh, really? Is it not? Sure looks pretty pretty good to me. I don't know about you guys. Let me do this. Or, ooh, that looks like... Oh, no. <laughs> uh, wow, they're all this... What am I missing? It's like just that function that it's angry about. Define random self. This can be the problem with copy pasta. Um, there's no reason that we need to make that asynchronous. Um, oh man, oh that's so frustrating. Uh, I really don't know. Let me just do this. Wow, okay, I copy and pasted it again. Suddenly, magically, that worked. What was the problem? <laughs> it's loading up. Uh, we'll see if we... Oh, it was space just... One space over. I just couldn't see it, I guess. Anyway, that was the problem. Okay, okay. I figured we might hit an error. That's why I let that one continue going. All right, so we need to import the robotics facility. Save that one. Uh, let's run that one again. And again, while we wait... Thank you for my most recent sponsors slash members. Abhinav, Robert, Kevin C., Mike Oxlong, James Howard, another Mike, Suzanne Williams, Newcastle Geek, and Sagar. 
Or is it Sagur? Probably Sagur. That's my guess. Let me know if you're watching. Or neither of those. <laughs> Anyways, thanks again. Sponsors slash members. At some point, they will change the name. All right. So we are building things. We are still waiting on our... We can at least see an enemy floating about there. Oh, my gosh. Did... Ah, position not defined. Uh, really? So from SC2 import, uh, we want to also import position since we're using a position. I forgot I refilled that. I almost dumped that on my face. <laughs> And then hopefully, if we build our observer and it appears to observe correctly, uh, I'll probably cut it here. And then uh, in the next tutorial, we're going to finish this up and work on you know saving this data. Um, and then also the attack uh, method. So we're going to have to change the attack method to currently just choose a random of the four choices. And then once we start training a neural network, we'll use the neural network to choose one of those, there goes our observer. It's off to a good start. Um, we have the neural network choose one of those four. But also, if we are victorious, we need to save that data. And to my knowledge, there's no really great way to do that inside the bot class. Um, so we'll get to that in a little bit. But anyways, so we can see our observer is just kind of floating around. Uh, it looks like he was just destroyed. Hopefully we're going to make another one. We should be popping another one out any moment now. There he is. He's off, back on his way. I actually have no idea. Like, I wonder if there's like a way to research like a bigger radius for our observer. And then also, um, like, how are they spotting the observer? How would we spot their observer if they have one? Um, that kind of thing. I'd be curious. Anyway, so in this case, um, <laughs> we just like totally ignored these guys. Um, did we die or what? No. Also, probably if we send our units to the enemy base, it would probably be a good idea to to let our units draw above them so we can see them. So our network would know, oh, we've got three units there already. Like, what are these? Oh, is that what our scout sees? It must be what our scout sees. But, like, they spotted my scout immediately. Interesting. They are just destroying us. We are not going to make it fellas. All right. So anyway, um, and that's my point. I, I don't think that you're going to beat the hard AI. And right now we're not, well, we're making silly decisions, but um, even later we're going to make even sillier decisions. Um, anyways, uh, in the next video, yeah, we're going to work on saving that data, coming up with random choices that we'll save if we are successful. Um, and then we'll build up a big old data set. And then we'll see if using that data set, training a network, is it, um, does it tend to beat the hard AI or no? Basically, does it do better than random versus hard AI? Yes or no. Um, and that'll tell us whether or not we can learn with this. And if we can, how much better is it than like random? And then if it's significantly better, then we can start adding more and more complexity and see what we can get away with, with our little generative, or not generative, <laughs> evolutionary algorithm. Okay, it's almost bedtime for Harrison. Okay, so if you've got questions, comments, concerns, suggestions, whatever, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video.